Hi, thank you for joining me. Um, today the subject's a little bit different to normal. Uh, it's not really about amateur radio, but it is still about radio. So um, for those of you that know me, know that uh, I've got a, a passion for boats and you'll probably also realise that I've got a marine VHF licence. So um, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, these. So this is my little, my little VHF handy. Um, normally on a boat you would have a fixed uh, unit with a bigger antenna and you would normally be encouraged to have one of these as well just in case you fall overboard or um, or if you want to talk to somebody and just haven't got your hand your uh, your other radio handy so um, in very much the same way as amateur radio you need a license and you have to sit a test and um, and the difference between these and amateur radio is these are not really um, operated for fun or for a hobby. These are simply for um, communication. So literally you would use one of these um, primarily to call distress. So if you've got an emergency, you would use one of these to call the Coast Guard. Um, also you would use one of these to call the marina if you're looking at uh, going into a marina or even leaving a marina. And equally you can use one of these to call ship to ship and even intra ship so you could use this to call different um, positions on a ship maybe if you've got one person on the stern one person on the foredeck and um, and you need to communicate between those people when you're coming into a berth for instance. Um, the, the main difference between these and amateur radio is these are channelised. So I won't go into all the channels, but basically you've got around about 20 channels, 20 usable channels, depending on what your purpose of uh, using the radio is. Some of the channels are specifically for maybe calling um, a calling channel, let's call it, or, uh, or even an emergency distress channel, which is channel 16 here in the UK. Um, some channels are specifically for calling um, other, other, other users with on, within the same ship. Um, and some are designated for intra-ship and inter-ship communications. Uh, again, I won't bore you with those. In terms of power, these have only got two settings, normal and low. Uh, I think the normal setting is 4 watts and I think the low power is uh, maybe half a watt or a quarter of a watt. But again, users of these radios don't tend to be bothered about um, the technicalities as we are in amateur radio because literally you pass your test, you buy your, your, your device and then you use it. Um, what else to tell you? What else to tell you? You can uh, quite happily use these radios on um, a dual watch system. So for instance, you may want them monitoring channel 16 and also at the same time monitoring maybe the, the channel 80 for talking to the marina. Um, so you can very easily press one of the buttons and it will go into dual watch and it will, it will listen to both stations at the same, or both channels at the same time. Um, also you've got the, the usual stuff like, that you would expect, such as uh, volume and squelch. Um, what else is there on here? There's a button for the, the weather. So um, different frequencies uh, at different times of the day will um, transmit the weather and shipping forecast. Um, and equally you've got an up down channel facility so as you can probably see there and if I press this button it will go to channel 16 and back to the channel that we was looking at just and if I go to channel 80 for instance and then I press dual watch that now is flicking between channel 80 and channel 16 so I'm watching both frequencies or both channels um, these are VHF, they operate um, at around 153 megahertz. Um, some of the channels are what we would class as simplex, so you transmit and receive on the same frequency. And then some of the channel, some of the some of the channels are what we would class as duplex. So you transmit on one frequency, and then you receive on a different frequency. And very often, you can only hear the frequency that um, you receive on. So I'll give you an example of that. So for instance, channel 80 is a duplex frequency. 
So what you would be able to hear is um, the conversation coming from the marina, but you wouldn't hear the conversation going to the marina from the boat because the boat would be transmitting on one frequency and then you're set to receive on the other frequency. So a lot of people who are interested in listening to radio, for instance, um, marine, if they live by the sea, is one of those um, one of those user types that people like to listen to. So you can do that using um, you can actually do it using a, a standard Bofeng or um, or many other wideband um, handy talkies. Personally, the easiest way to do it is with a proper marine um, radio. Although you clearly can't transmit because that would be illegal, um, the fact that they are channelised, and they're channelised in exactly the same way as everybody knows the channels on, on the marine uh, service, just makes it easy very, very quickly to go to channel 76 or channel 16 or channel 10, for instance. If you're using a scanner or if you're using a handy talkie, then you've got to do that, um, that mathematical equation to work out what frequency it is that you're going to. So, so what else to tell you? This particular one is made by Standard Horizon, which is another name for Yacy. This is uh, waterproof, weatherproof, and it also floats. Can't remember the exact spec. Just exactly the same as you would expect with um, just a normal amateur radio. You've got a PTT button. Um, you've got a little charging port there. One of the reasons why I bought this particular radio is because it charges off a standard USB cable, so you can charge it plugged into your laptop, for instance. It's got a detachable battery and a belt clip and a, a standard rubber duck. So again, you wouldn't normally get involved with replacing the antennas and upgrading to a higher gain antenna and all that kind of stuff because it, it literally is usable out of the box. Another great thing with this particular radio is it stays charged for probably a week at a time um, on standby. So it really, really is good. Um, different people who want different things from their radios might buy a more expensive one or might buy one with uh, GPS or, or an, an emergency feature um, for sailors uh, like uh, built-in EPIRBs and stuff like that but this does the job and it was also very very uh, very very cost effective so there you go that's, um, that's a little bit of an introduction into marine VHF um, long range marine radio tends to be um, HF but this is okay probably up to around about 10 miles um, and if you're using one off a boat with a bigger area then potentially you could be getting 10 15 20 maybe even more than that miles maybe even across the channel but these really are designed for a short distance as as most uh, vhf comms is there you go thanks a lot for checking in and um, hope you're enjoying the view we're in torquay this is torquay marina and uh, and it's absolutely beautiful so if you're into boats this is a definite uh, place to put on your visit list okay well thanks very much for joining me and i uh, hope you've enjoyed it and if you have don't forget to subscribe take care for now bye bye